It's time to globalize the cheaper version of Huawei's newest international presence, the Honor Magic 8 Pro. You might wonder why anyone would even consider getting a Chinese version of a phone while there's going to be, or there already is, a global version for it. And the easiest answer to that question would be the price tag. Especially with Honor phones, there has always been a significant price difference between the Chinese and global versions. And of course, the battery would be another reason. Almost all Chinese manufacturers are using smaller batteries in their global versions. So it does make sense, doesn't it? It does look a lot like an iPhone and it does show that right on the home screen, but it's cool. Anyways, let's not waste any time and get started right away. So I've already set up my unit right here. Again, it's pretty straightforward and self-explanatory, really. In case you're not familiar, there's an option for you to move your data from another phone, even from an iPhone, when you're just setting up your phone. And in terms of supported menu languages, there's a list that is actually quite extensive. There's all these languages. You can pause at any point to look for your language. But yeah, that's that's almost all the languages. And in terms of your input languages, so that's the languages you type in. In case your language is not supported natively on Honor's own keyboard app, then obviously you can go ahead and install any third-party keyboard app, like Gboard in my case. And you can, of course, set it as your default input method as well. Anyways, moving right on to basic Google functionality. So once you've done all that, you go to settings, you scroll down, and you go under users and accounts, and enable Google Play services right here. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is open Honor's app market and search Google Play. It, it has to be this. You can't search Play Store. It just won't work. It won't show it. Once you uh, search Google Play, it'll show you this right here. And then you, uh, you, you go ahead and enable it because it's already built in. I've already done that. So that's why it says open. But um, this is all you got to do. You don't need to sideload it or get the APK from anywhere or do anything extra. And then after you do that, of course, you get the Play Store app right here that you can use like on any other phone. Moving on to getting rid of bloatware. Now, obviously, none of this is bloatware to me, but if it is to you, you can just go ahead and uninstall it, like so. And um, I can't really think of an app that won't be uninstalled if you don't want it. And of course, you can also go ahead and select many of them at the same time to uninstall all of them together, which again, I'm not going to do, but this is what happens if you want to do that. Now let's talk about software features for a bit. Starting with the home screen. So if you swipe to the right on your home screen instead of Google feed, you're going to get this area called the uh, honor board. You can of course go ahead and customize the honor board as I have. So you tap on this little bubble right here and you can go ahead and disable this quick services because like, let me just enable that to show you. There's a bunch of Chinese apps and services, recommended apps really, and services. So I don't want that. So I've disabled it. And then there's like other card services that you can um, disable if you don't like them. So you can, there's there's a news area as well. I've disabled that also because I'm not interested in Chinese news. But at any rate, you can just get rid of as many of these widgets as you want, or you can just disable the honor board entirely. As such, you go to settings on your home screen and disable honor board. Now, by default, when you swipe down on your home screen, you get to this area, which is called the uh, search, app search, I believe. I'm not sure. Let's just find out together. So you go to settings. And it's going to be right here, Honor Search. That's what it's called. So you can switch to Notifications or Control Center to make it do this or this instead. And nothing happens if I swipe up because I've disabled it. It's called the uh, Library. If you enable it, it's sort of like an app drawer, categorized app drawer, which I'm not a fan of. And by the way, you can just disable this whole glass thing if you're not a fan of it. So it'll look like this instead. I have to admit, it still does look a lot like an iPhone, but... At least there's less glass. But I'm just going to enable that again real quick because as much as I hate to admit it, I like it now. Now, if you're wondering how compatible the uh, built-in software features are with global apps, let me just show a few of them to you. So you get the sidebar that you can customize. Obviously, it doesn't matter what app it is. You can, you can have whatever you want here to sort of open them as a pop-up, and it does work with all of your apps. We finally get Magic Board compatibility as well. So for instance, if you're looking to share this, picture you just hold it and you drag it right here and it does work with your global apps as well so there's telegram there should be others as well there's even google image search and then there's instagram yeah there's there's um, a lot of your global apps as well now not like before because they weren't supported before and only worked with chinese apps another little interesting thing to note here is the pop-up text editing features so like 
when you're trying to do this, you get AI writing that does work surprisingly in English. So if you tap it, it like it can help you give a summary of the text that you've just selected or like translate it or rephrase it, compose a new text altogether. And all of these, I've, I've tried almost all of them. Um, and, and it works almost 100% well in English, which is really surprising. And then you get Translate that does work with Google Translate. Another surprise from Honor. Of course, there's still the built-in Yo-Yo Translate as well. And then obviously you can just share the text and that's just normal. And the pop-up options that you get are obviously app dependent. So for instance, if you're on Google or, or like on a web page in general, and you select the text there, then you get different options. There's again, support for almost all of your apps, even Reddit. And then in terms of the uh, island, I guess island is proper now. I'm not even sure what to call things anymore because like everybody keeps doing the same thing, but calling it a different thing. At any rate, um, it, it does support YouTube music and I think all other music apps as well. And this is what it looks like in terms of animations, pretty smooth. But um, uh, yeah, we didn't have that before on, on uh, Magic OS 9, Chinese version, of course. But let's just see what it looks like with more than one island. Let's just start a recording and a timer. Three minutes, all right. Um, okay, yeah, this is what it looks like. And if you get close, there's like a shade behind it to show you that there is more than one that just went away for some reason, or it didn't go away. Yeah, it's still there, but it, it changed the one that's on the front. But anyways, this is what it looks like. And once you stop a recording, it just goes away. Same goes for the timer. Yeah, this is it. Now there's another thing that's really, really important, and that's fixing your delayed notifications. Now this process is uh, fairly similar on all Chinese ROMs nowadays, but there's still a few differences. Anyways, so once you enable all the uh, required permissions, and that's to say like enable notifications, obviously, and then you gotta go to power usage details, tap launch settings, disable manage automatically, and enable all these other three. However, there's a weird thing to note right here. So if you have just installed this app, this option will not exist here. Like you need to have used it for a while before it gives you this option here. But if you go to settings, scroll down, go to apps, and then go to app launch, then you can go ahead and do that here for all of your apps. So I've, I've done it for all these apps right here. Um, and, and the way it works is, is like this. So uh, for instance, it's going to be enabled by default, obviously. So once you disable it, it gives you the option to enable any of these three that you want, and you're going to do it for all of them. So it's auto launch, secondary launch, and run in background. And there's a short description underneath each option for you as well, if you're wondering. Also, you need to disable this option right here, manage unused apps. Cause like if you don't use a uh, certain app for a certain amount of time, I'm not even sure how long that is, but at any rate, as it does explain right here, it's, it's um, at some point it's gonna stop sending you notifications as well. So obviously we do not want that. And as for the last step to fix your late notifications, you're gonna have to go to settings, battery, more battery settings, and enable this. It says stay connected while asleep. Also, to those of you who have had to, in the past, deal with this very annoying notification every once in a while that says you need to close background apps or like um, kill background activities and all that, I'm happy to inform you that they've finally added in an option to stop that. So it's going to be right here. It says power consumption alert. I'm really happy to see that. Also, on a quick side note, let me just point out the fact that there is now Android Auto. So you can just open it right here and connect your vehicle. However, it's not going to be here by default. So you got to open your Play Store after you've enabled it. And then you're going to have to search for Android Auto. And then you're going to have to install it. It's not going to be installed by default, but you can install it. And then it, it'll show up in settings as usual. Now, moving on to AI features. So it's going to be right here under Honor AI and Yo-Yo, obviously. And let me just quickly add this right here. I do believe the Chinese versions of Honor phones are almost 100% global ready now. So it's extremely rare, almost impossible to come across anything in Chinese once you've done all of this. So like even for options that are essentially Chinese, it's still going to be translated. So like if you move on to AI call, um, this section that says AI auto answer, there's custom replies for common scenarios. Even these are in English. I live in China at the moment and all of these are in English. And, and this right here, I've written this, even this was in English. So everything, almost 100% of the phone has been translated, which is really happy to see. Even on your home screen, if you move on to your cards, which are essentially your widgets, everything is English. Cause like there are some phones around, including OnePlus and Oppo 
that have kept this area in Chinese for some weird reason, even for your native apps. So like um, on, on OnePlus and on Oppo, ColorOS essentially, even for calendar, clock, and files and gallery, weather, it says all of those things in Chinese for some reason. Anyways, moving back to uh, AI features. So there's AI subtitles, AI translate, AI call. All of these are, are working properly in English as, as far as I've used them. As for YoYo Agent itself though, um, it's a bit tricky and we'll try it out together in a second, but like it's able to understand and execute most, if not all of the commands that you give to it, but it responds in Chinese. So to give you an instance, let me just pop it open real quick. Remind me to go to work at 9 a.m. every Monday. Right, so it did it, but like even the description, it, the um, caption or, or the label, whatever it's called, is in Chinese. This is, it says 去工作, which means go to work, literally. And then it's set um, to happen every Monday at 9 a.m. So it did understand and execute the command only in Chinese for some reason. Obviously, it does work normally with basic tasks like setting timers and alarms and all that. So like set a timer for a minute. It does it immediately. But yeah, it's it's a it's a Chinese response. And in terms of playing music, again, it does understand the command, but unfortunately there's still a few features lacking, so like can you play some music for me? So it doesn't All right. Uh yeah, it, it doesn't work with uh global music apps. It does work with QQ and other Chinese music services and the built-in music app and it's still listening to me. Okay, it's including even my fillers. That's interesting. So it's able to understand 100% of the things that you tell it, but it's not. It's just not designed to respond back in English for some reason. But the AI subtitles, AI translate, and AI call interpretation, that's a, that's a cool one. Um, all of those things are working normally as far as I've used them. Now we get to Google's Circle to Search and Gemini. Unfortunately, I've tried really hard and it's just impossible apparently to get those to work properly so like i have them right here you might have noticed this is circle to search and this is gemini but this is what happens so like it kind of gets frozen you have to like tap back or like jump back to your home screen to uh sort of get out of that f frozen screen which is weird and more like a bug to me to be honest so like if you go to settings scroll down, go to apps and default apps, you do get the option to set Google as your default digital assistant app. But for some reason, it keeps forgetting that you've done this every once in a while. And by every once in a while, I mean pretty often. So like circle the search is not working right now, right? Um, if, if I uh, sort of set this to none and set it back to Google and then set the default voice input to Google again as well, then I can use circle to search or, or not. I'm not sure what happened. It used to work like that. But apparently, it's had enough of that. Let me just try that out real quick again. That's that's very weird. It used to work like that. But at any rate, it wasn't reliable anyways. So even if you do get it to work like that, it only works for like a minute or two and then it stops working again. So unfortunately, Circle to Search and Gemini are just not reliable at this point. You cannot use them. It might be fixed in the future because pretty much everything else is globally compatible now, but um, not those two for some reason. And in terms of alternatives, of course, you get the built-in one, which is Yo-Yo, essentially. And to access it, you're going to have to tap and hold with two fingers. This is what happens. You do get um, translate screen feature uh, or even create an event, because I, I'm assuming that's because there's a date here somewhere. Or not really. I can't see a date. I'm not sure what's happening here, but let's tap it to see what happens. New event. No event was recognized. Okay. Um, I, I guess you get that as well. I'm not sure what happened here um, or what it recognized on the screen. But I'm assuming if there's like a date or, or a time or a place, then this pops up. And then um, the translate screen feature is not limited to Chinese, of course. There's an extensive list of languages that are supported. And then you can select text like this. And then there's translate, share, search. And what's interesting is if you tap search, it gives you the option to do a uh, Chrome or a Google search. And there's, of course, the built-in browser as well, but I've disabled it because I just don't use it. But at any rate, you can, you can do Google and you can set it to default as well. And this is what happens. So to wrap it up, 
you do unfortunately still miss the usuals. So that's quick share, hey Google, Google timeline, and now circle to search for some weird reason. But that really seems to be it. And I've been using the phone as my daily driver for like the past 10 days or so. And I just have not come across any other issue that has bothered me in terms of being compatible with global apps and services. Let me know what you guys think down below. Also, I would very much appreciate it if you could take like five seconds to hype my video and help me grow and be able to access more and more devices faster and faster. All right, I'll see you all on the next one. Peace out.